In this video, we're discussing Kia Soul maintenance. Stay tuned. to the channel today we are discussing Kia Soul maintenance it was a topic brought up down in the comments section below uh, by people who have been requesting a lot more Kia Soul content so I'm trying to do some more stuff to get some stuff out to you guys things that we've seen with the with the Kia Soul little tips and tricks when you're driving it that'll help you get uh, better fuel mileage less wear and tear on the vehicle uh, if I get a chance I'm gonna go ahead and slide up in the tag up above how to get rid of your auto start stop because this is going to kind of tie into what we're talking about today that auto start stop system is really glitchy it feels horrible when you're sitting on a stop sign and it shuts off and then it has to restart it's very jarring to the driver to do this uh, my wife is not big into performance stuff so she doesn't really have an understanding of it but even she feels extremely jarred driving something with an auto start system. It just, we don't care for it. It's something that really does need to go away. The amount of fuel that it's gonna save you is very minimal at best. Sometimes it's actually going to burn more fuel if you don't live in a major city where you're stopped in traffic for long periods of time. And the worst part about it is when the auto start stop system kicks in, your AC stops working because your AC pump is tied to your serpentine belt so you don't have air conditioning. Again, this system was not thought out. It's something that doesn't really belong in vehicles in the first place. It was a crazy idea that needs to go to the wayside in a hurry. And will it? I doubt it. But um, one thing I'm noticing with the auto start stop systems is it is consuming some antifreeze and it is uh, from one of the comments down below he was having troubles keeping the transmission level full as well. Now, some of the transmission level might be due to uh, burn off or if there was an additive put in from the manufacturer, that additive can burn off through the clutches. If you're having extreme oil consumption, I, that you might wanna take it into the dealer because you might be looking at a warranty issue. Uh, I know that there was 2015 or 2016, there was a year that they had an issue with the engines. So if your vehicle fell in that year, you would get a new engine because the engine would fail because there was something designed with it that was improper that the engine would just prematurely uh, wear out the bearings. So then they would have to replace the engine. But uh, getting back into this maintenance, uh, we did notice that we are consuming antifreeze and we have actually eliminated the auto start stop system. We either use the button or we put it into sport mode. Again, just like I told you, check out that video that I dropped earlier in this video. You're gonna wanna check that out because the more you use this auto start stop system, the more it's going to consume fluids, the more you're going to have wear and tear on your engine. Uh, one thing we're noticing is when you use antifreeze, don't just go to an auto parts store. I know it's tempting, but for some reason, Kia uses a different kind of antifreeze. It is a green, but it is a different shade of green. It's extremely dark, so there is additives put into this stuff that you won't find in an auto parts store. And if you don't use the dealer stuff, you're going to have problems down the road where you're either gonna to have to flush it, replace head gaskets. It could even have an adverse effect to what is actually in there from the factory and actually cause either your thermostats to plug up, heater core to plug up. It's better to run the factory uh, fluid when you have a situation like this. If it isn't a normal thing or you're not doing a, <clears throat> a complete flush, if we were to do a complete flush, I would flush it completely, know where I bought my coolant from, and that's the only place I would get my coolant from. But since this is a brand new car, we're not gonna flush the fluid just to change it out to something that I can get anywhere. We're gonna use whatever the dealer had in it until it gets to that point that we do have to flush it. 
If we have to flush it, then I'm just gonna go to my local auto parts store, get the coolant that will work the best for me that I can easily grab and keep on hand. Until then, I'm just gonna keep a stock, uh, a jug of the stock coolant on hand. Like I said, this stuff is extremely dark green, a lot darker than I've seen any other green before. Uh, I don't know what additives they're putting into it. I guess I didn't do the research on that part of it to figure out what additives are in there to know if you could add your own additives. But that gets into a dangerous territory when you start playing with additives because if you got the mixtures wrong from what they have it, it could do the same thing. Again, plug up your thermostat, heat your core, wear out your cooling system, wreck your water pump. Those are all really, really bad things. They can be extremely expensive depending on how hard they are to change. Again, that gets into the cost thing that I want to bring up here. When you have mixing coolants or things like that, and you have to change a heater core because of that, a lot of times your heater cores are buried deep inside a firewall to where you have to pull your entire dash out to get at that heater core. And if you don't have a factory warranty to rely on, that gets to be really risky. You don't want to be in that territory of, well, now I got to spend this money at a dealer to have them put a heater core in it. I mean, you could be looking at, you know, up above a thousand dollars to do a heater core, even though the part might only cost you 40, 50 bucks. But it's that, it's the labor and the time and the intensive ability to take the entire dash apart without wrecking anything that they charge that much to do a heater core. So when you're doing stuff like that, make sure you're paying attention to what you're using, how, you, how much you're using, don't overfill the system. Kia Souls, again, on the maintenance, they are very specific on their oil. When you do the oil change, I'm gonna go ahead and slide that one up above. Oil change, we've done one on the channel. When you're doing it, make sure you don't overfill the oil. It's easy to do and it can destroy the engine. If you destroy the engine during your oil change, they're not gonna warranty it, even if it is a brand new car. Uh, just make sure you don't overfill it. That's usually what gets most people. And on these things, the recommended oil is 5W20. Extremely lightweight oil, I know. Um, if you live in warm climates, where your temperature never gets below 50 degrees, but your temperature can go up to 115, you may want to run the 530 that they recommend as a secondary oil, but don't run that 530 in cold climates. It is extremely hard on the engine, can actually cause the engine to start knocking. Uh, we had one that we had, the Black Pearl, which was on the channel. We did an oil change on that. All right, we'll go ahead and slide that bad boy out. Um, the oil change on the Black Pearl, we noticed that they used 520, uh, or 530, sorry. They used the 530. And that engine was starting to get kind of a tick to it, almost almost a knock, but not quite, but it had a, a pretty strong tick to it. And I, I firmly believe that they were running 530 in the wintertime, which was not recommended if you looked at the handbook. Uh, the handbook said nothing under, I believe, 10 degrees. You were not supposed to run the 530 because it was too thick of an oil. It was too hard for the engine to pull that oil up to the top without causing damage to the oil pump or causing the bearings to not have enough oil during startup. So uh, the maintenance on these things is very particular. When you're doing your oil change, make sure you don't overfill. When you do overfill, you're gonna have to take the plug out and drain some out on the bottom in order to get the oil level right. Uh, I can't remember if I've done an oil change video on that. I probably haven't. I don't think I have one up on the channel anymore. I think it was the first oil change on the two-wheel drive tank that I did that, where it was just a slight overfill. I didn't really want to risk it, so I drained some out. Um, again, you can't really know how, how much you're pouring in at one given time, so go slow. This one takes about four and maybe a quarter quarts. Most of the time it's four, all depends on the filter. If you pre-fill your filters, some people do pre-fill. Um, if you pre-fill your filters, remember you're not going to have as much that's going to bleed off of your uh, oil when you go to start the vehicle. So your oil level is gonna stay pretty full. The one advantage to filling your oil filter is you're putting oil at the engine right away to give it time for the 
for it to pull the oil to the top of the engine because it has to pull up to the filter filter then gets pushed up to the engine and when you pre-fill it you're actually getting oil up to the top of the engine right away so that you don't have a, a lag there while you're waiting for it to pull it up out of the pan to the filter that's a good way to do an oil change if i get a chance and we do another vehicle where we're doing an oil change i will try to show that technique of pre-filling your oil filter. I don't normally do it because a lot of the stuff I use, uh, it pulls pretty rapidly anyway, and I'm not too concerned about it, but it is kind of an additional safety measure that you can do. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, as far as maintenance goes, air filters are very important on a Kia Soul. Do not neglect your air filters. Usually every other oil change, we will replace our air filter because even just a little bit of contaminants inside that air filter is enough to make it not run properly. So doing your oil change, when you do your oil change, make sure you check that filter. Because if the filter gets too much in there to where it's just restrictive enough to make it not run properly, you're gonna have a rough idle. So air filters are extremely important. Do not neglect those bad boys. Uh, sorry, tying back to the oil. So on the, on the uh, oil, when you're filling it, the owner's manual actually says, wait 20 minutes uh, after the vehicle is ran. So after you've ran it, filled it, you know, even if you pre-fill your oil filter, now that you have ran it, the owner's manual says, wait 20 minutes in order to check the oil. And I thought that was kind of weird, but they're probably saying to let that oil drain down into the bottom of the pan so that you get an accurate reading for what they want in the engine. That is crucial on a Kia Soul. I have not seen that on any other engine. Uh, normally I will wait five to 10 minutes. I'll let a little bit drain back, but I won't get super crazy about it. Uh, GMs don't do that. Uh, Dodge Chrysler Mopar doesn't do that. Ford is not that way at all. I have not seen that at all on Fords. So it, again, that is something very specific to the Kia Soul that I wanted to bring up is when you do your oil changes, whether you fill that oil or not, the oil filter or not, make sure that once you've started it, because you have to start it to make sure you get the oil where it needs to be and to fully fill that filter. You can't fully fill it without starting the engine because it, it, even if you pour it in, there's still going to be air pockets in it. Uh, that filter has to fill completely in order to get an accurate reading of how much oil you have. But you have to wait those 20 minutes after running it. Uh, it's just kind of one of those weird things. One more topic I want to bring up is the air filter. The air filter is so crucial on these Kia Souls. For whatever reason, if that, oil fil or if that air filter gets too dirty, you get a rough idle and it doesn't run properly. Uh, I have noticed that it just, it really bogs down with a dirty air filter and it doesn't even have to be that dirty. That was the weird thing about it is when we replaced it, 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 to me, it was almost marginal. I did the light test on it. If I get a chance, I'm going to go ahead and slide the air filter video up above. Uh, in that air filter video, I show you how to check your air filter. I did that on our black Kia Soul, which was the black Pearl. I did, uh, replace that filter because even though I could still see light through it, it was still pretty dirty to where it was kind of marginal. I would run it on a V8, no problem. I would run it on a V6, no problem. But for whatever reason on this four cylinder, it's so restrictive on the air that it needs every little bit of air that it can get. And maybe that might be something that we're gonna do on this car is a cold air intake. Uh, I wanna be careful about how I do that. I want to make sure it's a good system that we're putting on here, nothing cheap. Uh, you can buy cheap ones on Amazon. I have had one. I've had one on the two-wheel drive tank. I'm still nervous about putting a cheap one back on the two-wheel drive tank until I know that I've fixed the hard start issue. Once I have, we're going to go ahead and put one back on there. Um, but I want to make sure we get a good cold air intake system for this car if that's the case because there's somewhere there's a massive restriction in the system and I want to know where it is. And it will help the fuel mileage, it will help the performance of the vehicle, and it'll also help the longevity of the car because it's not having to starve for air all the time. But again, check your air filters. I would say every probably two, three oil changes, 
go ahead and toss a filter in it because chances are that filter has picked up enough dust through the air that it's now plugged up to where it's not gonna run properly. And you're gonna have a rough idle or it's gonna have a hesitation or a lag. Uh, as, last thing as far as maintenance goes, we haven't seen too much with lights. We haven't seen too much with tires. Uh, brakes, if you are in a city situation where it's a lot of stop and go, go traffic, you are going to have to do front brake pads and probably rear brake pads. The, these things will chew up pads pretty quickly. Uh, the Black Pearl, we had to put brake pads in it at 30,000 miles. It was an extremely city driven vehicle. The pads were almost chewed down to nothing on the fronts and the backs were almost just as bad. And a lot of that came because of the fact that it was so city driven and the brakes were ran so hard. Uh, so brakes, you could be 30,000 if you're in a heavy city situation. You might be able to get, you know, 80, 90,000 out of your pads before having to do anything to it if you don't do city driving. So that's something to keep in mind as far as maintenance goes. The only reason I'm bringing up brakes is your fronts are pretty basic. We've done some brake jobs on the channel. If I get a chance, maybe I'll slide one of those up above. If not, we are going to be doing a brake job on the Silver Swine, which is a new build to the channel. Uh, I just announced that here not too long ago uh, that we were that we were going to go ahead. Sorry, I had to think about where my videos were falling. <laughs> uh, we did announce that that is going to be coming to the channel. We are doing a massive build on our Toyota Tacoma. We're gonna go ahead and remove some certain items that are painted. We're gonna add some chrome. Uh, we're gonna fix a lot of things that are broken or deteriorated over time. And this will help us re not only renew the life of this truck, but it'll help get us to the point that this truck is 100% usable for what we're doing with it. For us, it's a, just a commuter truck to get around with, maybe haul a few small things. So there is some uh, projects that we're gonna be doing that may not be necessarily in the garage, but it's important that we get these done because it'll help us utilize this truck better. And the only reason I'm bringing up the truck is because we do have to do a massive brake job on that truck. That was a city-driven truck, that truck has 36,000 miles on it and the brakes are smoked. Uh, they are in really bad shape. Uh, they work, but you can tell that it doesn't have the stopping power. You can tell the pads are wore down and it's, it's time for a full brake job on that truck. But when doing the brakes, the fronts are pretty simple. All you gotta do is press the front pistons in, put your new pads in. If you have to put a rotor on, they just slide right off. Uh, I don't believe our Kia Soul had a retaining clip, but if it does, you just have to break the retaining clip, pull the rotor off. You can then put the new one on, but you do have to remove the caliper bracket to change rotors. That's usually two bolts on the back side, pulls off the bracket that holds the caliper. Then that rotor will slide right off, put the new rotor up, put that bracket back on. Then you can put your pads inside your calipers slide those on with two screws in the back to hold your caliper on. Once you do that, make sure you pump your brakes so that it takes out the slack and the pads. Otherwise you could wind up just putting it into gear and going right through your garage. Bad idea. Uh, the reason I bring this all up is the backs all have a very special tool that you need. Okay, took me a bit to find it. Well, let me come in and show you. For your rear pads on a Kia Soul, you will need this special little block. This block has different sides to it, different configurations. Uh, you'll have to try out the block to figure out which one is the one that works for you. I'm guessing since the marks I have are on this, this is the one you would need to turn your piston in. So that's what you would need. Uh, you will need this tool to rotate the piston into place. Uh, you cannot press those in. And that was something I wanted to bring up because foreign vehicles are known for using these on their calipers. And if you don't have one, you're gonna have to get one because it's the only way to get your piston to go in. Now, if you use try to use this tool and it just keeps slipping off and you can't get the piston in, that means the caliper is shy. And we haven't seen it yet on the Kia Soul because we haven't had one that's had high enough miles for that. 
But again, bringing up maintenance, this is kind of where we stand is there are certain things that we're watching very closely, keeping an eye on, such as our transmission levels, our coolant levels, and we're trying to avoid using that auto start stop system. Uh, if we can do all those and keep the fluids down to where they need to be, we're looking at doing a few projects to this one. There is a custom catch can, is all I'm gonna say, uh, that we want to install on here. Once we get a chance to, this is going to help because this is a GDI engine, meaning that the gas is direct injection into the cylinder. It doesn't wash down the valves. And when you have your EGR system dumping all the crap back in to your engine from the intake, that's where the GDIs have troubles with their engines. And there's a way that we can kind of prevent this by putting in an oil catch can. Uh, otherwise, we have to do this. We have to use one of these about every uh, 12 to 15,000 miles. And what that does is help keep crap out of our engine intake. Now, where that goes in is through the ma uh, major uh, air line that goes to your master cylinder. It's actually a vacuum line. It pulls air out of your brake chamber. Let me bring in and show you. So back here is what you what they call your brake booster, and it pulls vacuum pressure in there, which helps pump up your brakes so that you have a power brake system. So again, that auto start stop is a bad thing because you're not building vacuum pressure because your engine's not running. So you won't have power brakes. Again, there's so many things I'm seeing with this auto start stop that it just shouldn't be here. Shouldn't exist, shouldn't be part of what we're doing. Um, but you have to feed it in through that line in order to clean out those intake valves. And if you don't do it every 15, it builds up to the point that the engine gets so bad that it just doesn't run properly. And it's one of those things that it has to be done regularly. So again, there is a huge downside to this style engine. That GDI engine has so many things that it needs maintenance on. The air filter, proper oil levels, uh, flushing out your intake valves every 15,000 miles. It, there is quite a bit of maintenance to do on these newer engines versus the older ones. But I tried to do as much as I could in this video to explain exactly where we were as far as maintenance, where we where, what we're looking at now after we've owned this for about 13, 14,000 miles. We're getting up on where we have to go ahead and do that intake flush. So that'll be coming up in the next little bit here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start sliding some videos in on the uh, Silver Swine, because obviously it's the new build to the channel, but we gotta get cracking at it, we gotta get this thing going. Uh, I still wanna use it this summer, so I don't want it to be tied up in the garage like it was with the Crimson 5.7, which we said goodbye to, unfortunately. Uh, if I have any room left for tapes, I'm gonna go ahead and slide that up above. Uh, that one just, it was kind of a, a sad video because we were letting go of, the, uh, of our Dodge Ram the Crimson 5.7, and I wasn't sure where the channel was going to go at that point. So I really had to take a step back and kind of decide, okay, where are we at? What's our plans for the future? What are we looking at? You know, were we going to do a big move ourselves? That was part of the part of a question that we were asking. Uh, we also had a bunch of house projects going on, so my time was getting divided so much that I just didn't know where I was going to stand it when it was all said and done. And I kind of have my answers now, so we've started moving forward with the build. We're going to continue the channel and bringing you content. If you got any suggestions of stuff you want to see, either for the Kia Soul, the uh, Silver Swine, two-wheel drive tank, go ahead, drop that stuff in the comments down below. I'll, I always read the comments. I res try to respond to everyone. Uh, sometimes I don't catch an, like a re-response. So if I miss your re-response, please drop it in a different video. 
and I'll, I'll pick it up and catch it and reply back to you. But I'd like to say thank you for watching. Please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.